Hey everybody, uh, Dolph here in Mattawa, out here with Jasmine today. We're um, doing some sampling in a honey crisp orchard, uh, looking at calcium treatments. And this is a good opportunity to just kind of talk about some of the challenges that we're facing uh, with this with this apple in the Pacific Northwest. And I think you know, these are common problems that we see uh, anywhere honey crisp is grown, but uh, Mattawa, Washington, is a uh, in the state of Washington is a very warm site uh, it creates some unique challenges for growing honey crisp honey crisp is uh, it favors higher elevation but we're uh, in the neighborhood of uh, six or seven hundred feet above sea level here um, and daytime temperatures are are very warm here in the summertime so today we're expecting to be uh, triple digits and we have been for the last uh, couple of weeks here. So uh, most of the growers here uh, use some form of either shade cloth or overhead cooling to help mitigate the amount of sun burn and stress on the trees. And uh, in this case, we're using overhead cooling. Um, and uh, as you can see, the soil is uh, very wet out in the rows um, and uh, but you can see dry patches underneath the trees uh, throughout the orchard. Another thing you'll notice here is the amount of fruit that's on the ground underneath the tree. So this is another problem with Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp has been very profitable but but there are some really um, kind of unique challenges with growing this apple and this is one of them. So uh, this block is relatively vigorous. You can see how deep green the leaves are. Um, they've done some summer pruning. Uh, they're trying to manage their vigor that way. Um, but as a result of the vigor, the, the fruit tends to get very large. So the, the apples in this orchard are, are very large. And we're, we're still probably a week to a week and a half from really getting serious picking here. But you can see the fruit size is, is very large on average. Um, and so what these growers are doing is, is uh, leaving doubles like this, or sometimes even triples on the tree, uh, to try to help mitigate some of the fruit size issues. Another thing that you'll see is that we have this really insidious problem here with, with uh, bitter pit. And this is prevalent throughout this orchard. Um, and it is, it's uh, associated with the higher vigor. Um, with uh, larger fruit and, um, and also uh, with the warmer climate, the, the warmer site. Um, so this also can be affected um, by the amount of potassium, magnesium that the, the plants are getting as well, and a lack of adequate calcium nutrition. Uh, and that's what we're really focused on is trying to provide that adequate calcium nutrition with uh, with the redox programs. So um, we actually have several demos out this year. This is one of the orchards we have demos in and we're doing uh, a program with soil app applied mainstay calcium, which is a, a, a micro encapsulated calcium 20% that we put on the, on the soil. Uh, we're emphasizing applications uh, during the cell division phase uh, so we start at bloom time and we try to get um, a good heavy dose on um, within that first six weeks as the apple is developing. And then we're using a, a lighter rate out through the summer um, in these uh, dental blocks. And this is something that has been uh, underway here in the Pacific Northwest for quite some time. Mainstay calcium has been in use for many years and is very popular for uh, this variety in particular. Uh, because of the, the benefits it provides reducing bitter pit. Um, in any event, uh, the, the opportunity here for um, managing this crop is obvious. Uh, it, it requires a lot of attention. Uh, the mineral nutrition requirements are unique uh, and um, balancing nitrogen, irrigation, um, site selection, cultivar, um, crop load, um, all of these things make a big difference. Uh, another thing that we've done 
uh, and historically the fruit industry has addressed issues with bitter pit in particular foli with foliar nutrition, foliar calcium sprays. The, the standard in the state of Washington is calcium chloride. Um, Redox has a product called Mainstay SI, which is, uh, um, has some unique benefits. It, it has calcium and silicon in it, which uh, both help to uh, strengthen the cell walls um, and provide that uh, uh, um, uh, strong tissue that you need to avoid getting bitter pit. One of the things that you see when you have a lot of bitter pit uh, it's been shown is, is that the bitter pit's often associated with air spaces in the tissue of the fruit. And uh, when we add silicon to the equation here, it helps bind the cells more tightly together. And so the number of uh, air spaces between cells in the fruit is much reduced. So let's walk over and uh, look. So just, just for example, so how tough is it to find uh, bitter pit in, this is the grower standard treatment here. Okay, so pretty easy to find bitter pit here. Um, we can just uh, go on the tree and you can find this. So these apples will be left behind. Um, when you see this uh, in the orchard at this time, <clears throat> so we're not quite to harvest. Um, the expectations for getting a good pack out are, are probably not good here. So even though you may pick fruit that is clean, like this one doesn't have any visible symptoms of bitter pit, there's a good chance that, that you will see uh, that coming out in storage. So, so this is the grower standard treatment, pretty easy to find bitter pit. So let's walk over here and just look at uh, some of the other treatments that we have. And you can just see the, the fruit on the ground out here. Um, you know, I, I would say probably 10% of the fruit in the orchard is on the ground right now. Uh, by the time these guys are done with harvest, they're looking at uh, probably, you know, 15 to 20 percent that's going to be left behind. And so that's a substantial amount of fruit uh, left behind. And, you know, the dollars that are involved in that are significant. So solving this problem is a, a big priority. All right, so we're going to just walk up one of these rows here. This is... Uh, a portion of the orchard that was treated with foliar remains to ASI sprays uh, starting at petal fall. And uh, the standard program has been to put on two of those uh, with a total of about a gallon of uh, remains to ASI per acre. And so we're kind of looking for bitter pit here. Um, and uh, there's some variability in here. Um, these guys are uh, trying to uh, reduce the amount of water. Uh, that they're applying in, in these blocks to help mitigate some of the bitter pit problems. But, you know, it's not, it's, it's not uh, as easy to find bitter pit in, in this area with the Mainstay SI. So I haven't found, a, I haven't seen a bitter pit apple yet. Um, they're here for sure, but I haven't seen one yet. So yeah, here's, here's a bitter pit apple. So down in the, in the lower portion of the tree, um, a uh, nice big apple, but it, we're showing some bitter pit symptoms. But as you can see, the bitter pit here doesn't appear to be as severe as it is over in the uh, in the grower standard section. So there's there's obviously much less bitter pit here in this portion of the orchard. So let's so that's the mainstay SI. Let's go over here and we'll take a look. Uh, they're using some calcium thiosulfate on the other side. This is the cats uh, or the calcium thiosulfate section of the orchard. And we're looking for bitter pit here. There's some right there. Um, yeah, not, not too hard to find here. You, you can see that that's already starting to show there. Um, There's some more. So it's, it's, it's really pretty easy to find here. It's not, it doesn't seem to be as prevalent as in the grower standard, but um, there's, there's more here than, than across the road, it looks like. Uh, you know, this is an anecdotal uh, example for sure, but there's plenty of bitter pit here. So um, 
you know, the, the unique thing about mainstay calcium, mainstay SI, um, in addition to the, the silicone content in, in SI, is that uh, both of those products are microencapsulated calcium. So whether you apply them on the, on the soil or on the foliage, um, the, the calcium uh, ion is protected. So that uh, divalent charge is, is protected and allows that ion to get uh, into the plant much more easily. It doesn't get tied up in the soil or uh, on the surface of the leaf. Um, Anyway, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, we have collected samples here today. We're going to take uh, fruit in for analysis. We're doing mineral analysis on the cortex of the apple. And we're also taking fruit in. We're going to do some uh, storage tests. So we'll keep the fruit for 30 days and see what comes out in storage. And we'll let you know what happens.